AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. Here are today's top headlines. President Obama signals the beginning of a new industrial policy. Foreign automakers are not happy with the president. And two top Chrysler executives are going to step down. Up next, we'll be back with the news behind the headlines. This is AutoLine Daily for Friday, May 1st, 2009, and now the news. Well, as y'all heard yesterday, President Obama announced that Chrysler will file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. What I find significant is that the announcement was not made by the Secretary of the Treasury or the Commerce Department. It was not a member of the Automotive Task Force. It was the President of the United States who came out to face the cameras to say that a car company was filing for bankruptcy. Why did the administration decide the president had to make this announcement? Is this the signal of a new industrial policy where the U.S. is going to fight to keep its auto industry? We'll have to watch this one. We also learned yesterday that Chrysler's CEO, Bob Nardelli, would be stepping down once that bankruptcy is completed. No surprise there. Cerberus brought Nardelli in as the hatchet man, and everyone knew he would only be there temporarily. But Chrysler president Tom Lasorda will also be leaving, and that is a surprise, though I am told he will not be missed. Lasorda lost a lot of respect inside Chrysler when he took a $20 million bonus two years ago, even though the company was bleeding red ink. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration announced new roof strength standards for vehicles yesterday. It doubles the current requirement. Driver and passenger sides of the roof must withstand forces three times the weight of the vehicle. NHTSA also announced roofs on heavy vehicles weighing between 6,000 and 10,000 pounds must be able to withstand a force 1.5 times the weight of the vehicle. Previously, heavy vehicles were unregulated and these new standards will be phased in starting in 2012 and completed by 2017. Fiat received 46 million euros or about 61 million dollars in aid from the Italian government. According to Wards, the money will be used to retool a plant that currently builds the Lancia Ypsilon. The loan comes after CEO Sergio Marchionne complained his company was at a disadvantage because other European governments are handing out loans to their automakers. But $61 million? That doesn't even sound worth asking for. Yesterday in his speech about Chrysler, President Obama encouraged people to buy American. But this is drawing fire from the American International Automobiles Dealer Association, which represents foreign automakers in America. Wards reports, the association said, protectionism has no place in a U.S. economic recovery. There are many things automakers can do to boost fuel economy. Some of the biggest tricks up their sleeves include cutting weight and downsizing engines. But vehicle aerodynamics is another biggie. Autoblog reports that in five years, Mercedes is shooting to build a car with a coefficient of drag of only 0.20. The brand new E-Class Coupe already slices through the air with a score of 0.24, which is better than the 2010 Toyota Prius. According to the car's project manager, there are still some big improvements to be made around the engine and under the hood. Coming up next, a preview of this week's AutoLine Detroit, where we take a deep dive into what's going to happen next at Chrysler. We'll be back right after this. Changing tires out here could be dangerous, but with these tires, I don't need to worry. Bridgestone. On this week's Auto Line Detroit, I have three experts giving their insight and analysis into what's likely going to happen at Chrysler now that it's filing for bankruptcy. Joining me are Craig Fitzgerald from Plant and Moran, Kate Leinbaugh from The Wall Street Journal, and Jim Hall from 2953 Analytics. In this clip, we pick up the discussion where we're talking about what Fiat is going to get out of this deal. Uh, one of the things Fiat wants out of this is Jeep distribution for the world. Hmm. Because right now, they make no sport utilities or legitimate crossover vehicles with Fiat or with any of the Fiat brands. So maybe Fiat will help Chrysler export exactly. out of North America and not just with Jeep? Exactly. I think that's very possible. You could also see uh, Fiat get access to the uh, um, Phoenix engine 
the V6, V6 engine. <laughs> because right now they build a V6, they build it for Alfa Romeo. And the economies of scale aren't there. But a set of Alfa heads and induction system on a, uh, on a Phoenix engine could be a very, very interesting thing. And good for the manufacturing facility that's going to be doing the sixes here. And these are precisely the things that the secured lenders were talking about when they said, actually, there's value at Chrysler, and we think their, that their liquidation analysis was richer than the government's. They, they pointed to the Phoenix engine as having a lot of potential value. And Jeep's international sales of, of the brand... Uh, through all of the consumer products is $500 million a year. So there, there's a lot of value in, in the company that can, that can help it go forward. And I you can catch the entire episode right now at AutolineDetroit.tv. And now it's time to announce the winner of this week's trivia contest. We challenged you to identify the car pictured here. To make it a little harder, we only gave you a small photo as a clue. So what is it? Well, it's actually the Toyota IQ concept car. But if you called it the Scion IQ, we counted that too. And as always, my crack team randomly selected today's winner from the pool of correct responses. And this week's winner is Dan Brookbauer of Muskegon, Michigan. Congratulations, Dan. You just won a Chrysler key fob. You better hold on to it too. It might be a collector's item someday. Hopefully not any day too soon. Anyway, that's it for today's top news in the global automotive industry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you Monday. Visit our website for even more great content all week long. Autoline Extra, Don's Journal, Podcasts, and even more. So click over and get the inside view at AutolineDetroit.tv.